Hello everyone, this is a Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. We're on the first day of August 2023 and today we have Kevin Martins and Mark Wade. Thanks a lot for coming. We have uh, two open action items, then we'll see what has been done lately and what is ongoing. Then we may have news. I'm happy that you're there, Mark. You may say a word or two about the end of life operating systems. On the open action items, I have a question first. What about uh, two weeks from now, so August the 15th, uh, will be on PTO and even maybe not at home, not that I'm that important for that meeting, but would you like to run it or should we cancel it? I can hear you, Mark, you are muted. I'm out of the office that day as well. I propose we cancel. It's August. Hey, I want I, I covet to be more like Europe, my European friends who I have some friends mm -hmm. who take the month of August off the whole month. And I like that attitude. So I think we should cancel the meeting next <laughs> in two weeks. Thanks a lot, Mark. Um, I'm afraid this is on you because I don't have access to the agenda. If if we agree I have access to the agenda, I'll go cancel it immediately. Thanks a lot, Mark. Then, as always, the other uh, open action item is Docker images. Of course, the container image depreciation for the Blue Ocean container is something to announce properly to the end user, and it hasn't been done correctly yet. Now, uh, what has been done the last two weeks? I've seen a lot of work on the agent and controller images. Unfortunately, Hervé did most of the work and is not less in, is not there to testify. So unless Mark or Kevin know lots of things about what Hervé did, we'll just say a few words about that. So what I've seen on the SSH agent is that lots of versions got bumped up, uh, resulting to just one release, 5.8.0. We saw the new... <laughs> I don't know if the name version is a correct term. I don't think so. It's still both eye. What is it? A snapshot? Um, Mark, how should we call that? Uh, you know, because we updated the bullseye version. Right. It's it's the operating system version. So I think version is fine. OK, thank you. Um, next, I saw something about JDK 17. I think we uh, reached the um, dash 9 something. So it's a minor update. And then Git, that you love so much, Mark, has been updated for Windows. And it was a good thing to do because I think it was way, way outdated. Am I right? Uh, no. Well, as far as I know, we're keeping it relatively current. But no, no matter. It's a good thing to update it. Command line Anyhow. Git is, a, is an important part of many, many uses of Jenkins. Got it. My bad. Sorry. Uh, then on the Docker agents, there were also lots of version bumps. We had two releases these last two weeks. So we bumped up the Arc Linux version, of course, Bolsai also, the version of Jenkins Remoting, GTK 17, GTK 11, and Git on Windows 2. For inboot agents, we also had a few version bumps and some new images uh, resulting in two new releases. We have uh, the Jenkins agent that got uh, bumped, of course. So because it's um, the root uh, Docker image we are basing inbound agent on. And we also have new images for Windows 2022, which is a good thing. I don't know if somebody in the community was waiting for that, but we created it nonetheless. Yeah, yes, there, there's, there's lots of interest in it, actually. So uh, Windows 2018 is reaching nearing end of life. So lots of interest may be too strong, but Windows 2018 really is. Oh, 18, yeah. Uh, well, whatever whatever 1809 means, because there really probably really isn't a 2018, but the 1809 container image is, hey, now many years out of date. Yep. Ouch. Come on. Sorry. Yep, got it. And the controller, of course, uh, got three new releases following the Jenkins path. Uh, and, but we have nonetheless new versions of GDK 11 and 17. And of course, the Bullseye version got bumped. Now, on to the ongoing work. On SSH agent, uh, I saw that Git LFS version was a work in progress. Uh, there's also a kind of old uh, pull requests 
from a new contributor to build the um, SSH agent for Debian Bookworm. I said I wanted to help, but didn't find the time to. So I wrote a message uh, this week, I guess, asking uh, the user what kind of help I could bring, but didn't get any answer yet. Then we have also um, a switch to the OpenSSH installation to the Windows native SSH, which could be a breaking change, but this one hasn't been updated in a while, I think. Mark, anything to add to this one? No, the, well, actually I take it back. Yes, there's oh, still a you. question about how we name containers and the container naming thing is at least peripherally involved in the question because, because we've got on the controller side, we don't encode the operating system name consistently into the image. But on the agent side, we do because we have more agent, more, more OS names. The question ultimately is, should we adopt a consistent naming pattern, agents and controllers, et cetera? But that's a bigger question than just the agents. Right now, we hold with the pattern we have. I see. Uh, so do you see um, a set of images where you would say that it is consistently named? Or is, is there a um, repo we should take example on? I, I don't I don't have strong opinions one way or the other. Okay. I know there are strengths and weaknesses to each convention. Oh. And I think we've got workable things both for container for the controller and for the agents, right? The users of the agents know what labels to what names to use, and the users of the controllers know what names to use. It's just a little surprising sometimes that they use a slightly different naming convention. Yes, and uh, lately I've been installing quite a lot of help tools into my IDE. And whenever I use some Jenkins dot something dot something dot something, uh, these tools tell me mm -mm, it doesn't sound really good. You should have a pinned version of some sort or just get rid of the Debian. You even don't say which Debian you're using and so on. So yes, I think we could do better in a way or another. Uh, I don't want to have that big of a name for an agent or a controller, but maybe we should say something more precise. I don't know. I get your point, Mark. Thanks a lot. Uh, next one is on the Docker agent. So there is some work ahead uh, about Windows Nano Server tags, but it won't change the um, uh, image themselves. It's just changing the way we tag the images. Uh, then for the inbound agent, I thought this one was already done and merged, but I was wrong. So we are trying to sync the readme.md with what is appearing on Docker Hub. And I think Elve also is working, or is it Damien, whatever, on uh, tracking the Nmap version, which is used in Windows Test. Once more, that won't change the image itself, just the building process. And on the controller, there's an old uh, PR about uninstalling a plugin. We ask the user for some changes. I think he's done most of them. So I think this one just needs a review once again. Uh, the goal of this PR is just to change the readme file or add a .md somewhere that explains how to install uninstall a plugin when you are using Docker. And now it's heavily based on the article that the blog post that got published on Jenkins.io a few weeks or months ago. Time flies by. Wow. Uh, <laughs> then uh, last time we had this meeting, I said a few words about end of life operating systems and Kenneth told us uh, what his point of view is and why so many people are stuck with old um, OS that have reached more or less their end of life, but they still have to use them because of um, proprietary software most of the time, uh, contracts. So uh, they're happy that um, operating system vendors uh, keep on their support as long as you pay them, of course. So Mark, you wrote a really nice uh, blog post. I think I'll link to that. No, it's not the blog post. It's your post on community.jenkins.io. But would you like to add anything to that? Uh, it just the, the concept is, it's a good thing for vendors like Red Hat, Canonical, Microsoft, that they correctly, when their customers ask, 
offer to sell those customers a support product that extends the life of the thing they were previously supporting publicly to now have an additional support life. And they require extra payment for that. It's very fair of them. That's perfectly yeah. reasonable. However, the Jenkins project has never paid for additional support beyond the contracts beyond the end of life. And given how we're we're a, an open source community dependent on people contributing their time and their skill, I don't think we should start doing that. So now that doesn't stop commercial entities from doing that kind of thing if they wish, but the Jenkins project itself should not extend beyond the public end of life because I can't imagine how I would persuade the people who maintain the various plugins in the Jenkins plugin ecosystem that they need to go pay someone for an additional operating system contract in order to support. It just doesn't feel right. No, you're right. I get it. And frankly, you wrote that you're open to disagreement and mm -hmm. I saw no answer uh, for the time being. Right. So pretty encouraging. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I resisted the urge to add the um, uh, Debian uh, 17, uh, Debian and GDK 17 installation because we already talked about that two weeks from now. Uh, Kevin, would you like nonetheless to tell us something about that or is it done, finished, merged? We don't talk about that anymore. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, so for the most part, the work is done. There's still the need to update the Windows installation documentation specifically, uh, but that's more because it's using a much older version of Jenkins than we would typically use in the documentation. Um, but there is a blog post that actually just went out today, uh, just announcing the transition and the fact that we've made this transition um, that lists out some of the areas that the documentation has been updated and just give some background on it. So uh, for the most part, it is completed. Uh, it's really just that Windows piece that we're, we still need to figure out. And um, it's something that I'm uh, partnering up with uh, IT for just to see if I can get a machine myself to do that. Or, uh, you know, if it comes down to it, obviously asking for help from the community. So um, regardless, we'll get there and that'll be taken care of. But yeah. Thanks a lot for that. Um... That's all that I had. I may have just a little subject, but it was not really prepared. So that may not work at all. Uh, Kevin and Mark, would you have anything to add uh, in the news or anything I, else? I actually had one item that I wanted to add to the, to the page because I just got some data from Basel Crow that oh. I think is an interesting topic or an interesting thing to view. So I'm going to just insert it, if that's okay. Oh, Here's of the, Thank you. here goes the picture. Oh, it's all right. Oh, so you uh, have JDK to... version installations, maybe? No. Exactly. Ooh, JDK use by date. So if you put that on screen, so I think. Oh, it's there. Sorry. Yes, it's on the next page. Okay, so so the the prompt for this is that I've sent a message to the Jenkins board and to mm -hmm. Jenkins officers, including mm -hmm. Kevin as documentation officer uh, and Tim Jacom as release officer, proposing a uh, uh, to choose the when Jenkins will stop supporting Java 11 and when we will plan to start supporting Java 21. And the, the, the feedback thus far, Tim Jacom says, yep, sounds like a good plan. Kevin said, sounds like a good plan. Um, Uli Hoffner has some concerns in terms of the developer experience that we're mm -hmm. trying to work through, but this graph shows what, what we see as the common life cycle. All right, so the green line that you see there is Java 8 usage, and the date is all the way up through the end of July of 2023, so very recent data. And But what we see is nicely tapering off of Java 8 use. Now, when we say tapering off, it's still 100,000 controllers yes. running Java 8, right? So taper taper is, is all relative, but it's a good story that what you see is Java 11 is clearly at the 150,000 point and Java 17 is growing down at the bottom. It's probably in the 30 to 40,000 range right now. So the proposal that I sent suggested a series of steps. 
step one is choose the dates and the proposal is we will take Jenkins end of life for Java 11 to be October of 2024 when Tamarin ends their life of Java 11, oh, when Red Hat cool. ends their life of Java 11, and one month after Microsoft ends their life of Java 11. So, so it's right in the time frame where three big vendors of Java platform items are all stopping their support of Java 11. So the Jenkins project, propo the proposal is October 2024, one year from, you know, 14 months from now, we yeah. will stop supporting Java 11. Now, in order to the get that to that date, we need to alert users. And so the proposal is that in October of this year, we will put a warning into Jenkins Weekly that says Java 11 is going away at the end of October 2024. And that warning will appear to users, giving them a year to get themselves prepared if they're on Weekly. And if they are using LTS 12 weeks LTS, later? it will then cause it to arrive in December. Okay. And so they will then see it in December and have about 10 months to get themselves prepared for that transition off of Java 11. Hmm. So the October, really the October introduction is into weekly gives us enough lead time to be sure that it reaches the December dot one release of the next LTS after 4.14. So, so then the next piece of the story is that we want, I, my proposal was let's set our objective to support Java 21 in Jenkins by end of October, 2023, Java 21 will release in September of 2023. So September 19 is the officially declared release date. And about six weeks later, the goal is at least by that point, six weeks later, have a Jenkins weekly release that officially supports Java 21. Okay. So the idea is a, a phased approach. We get Java 21 supported in weekly and then the next LTS, and it may be the December LTS, or it may more likely be the, the next LTS three months later that includes 21 and LTS. It just depends on when we get the weekly supporting Java 21. Okay, I guess Basil has already done all the uh, calculation. He may know how much effort we will have to push Jenkins into the Java 21 um, version. So, yeah, so so Basil, Basil and others are already using Java 21 early access as their primary Java. Really? So, yeah, oh. so so yes, you're correct. There, there are already people thinking about this using the Java 21 early access. However, we have to worry about Jenkins infrastructure, right? We've got to have Java 21 yep. available on ci.jenkins.io. We've got to worry about container images. We've got to worry about installers. We've got to worry about all sorts of things that are, are more than just the developer experience before we're ready to say, yes, Java 21 is good to go. So we've got plenty of work to do, but the picture looks pretty good that it's doable the infra team has agreed they'll they think they can make it no problem with java 21 infrastructure well before the end of october and and so we're looking forward to it yeah but we'll have to educate if they don't educate themselves uh the core developers to gdk 21 and of course plugin developers and so on i've read um this morning um some code, some Java code that used to work for Java 11 that doesn't work anymore with Java 21 or that does something else or even doesn't compile. Uh, so yes, there is quite a lot of work ahead. Maybe not that hard for people already experimenting with Java 21, but for um, normal developers <laughs> like I am, I guess I will have to educate myself be before pushing my plugins to GDK 21. Well, and, and as a matter of practicality, you really won't push your plugins to use Java 21 features for quite a while, yeah. right? Because when we support Java 21, when we start that, when when our when that purple line that is Java 17 on this graph becomes a Java 21 line, during that time, we'll still be delivering Java 11 code and building Java 11 bytecode. So you can't use Java 21 features 
in that yeah. code unless you're willing yeah, right. to lock your users out of running Java 11 or Java 17. And, and so, and that's, that's uncommon. We don't want to lock users out. That's not a healthy thing to do. Of course. Um, we're almost running out of time, but I have still one question, which is linked to that. As I said before, it's not really prepared. But earlier uh, last weekend, I was trying to install Jenkins on a machine only having a GDK 21. Uh, or mm -hmm. was it 20? Yeah, 20, sorry. Um, and Jenkins refused to install because it was not, as I read in the log, uh, recognizing the pattern of the GDK version name. So, okay, it's something that is hard-coded or bundled in? No, no, there's a, there's a known command line argument that you can use that will tell Jenkins oh. to broaden its allowed range of versions that it's willing to accept. I think it's enable future. So if you just do a minus minus help on your command line, it will tell you if you really mean it that you want to run on on a more recent Java version or a different Java version, then then there's this. I think it's enable future, but minus minus help will tell you. Okay, but that if you are installing Jenkins by hand, what about apt get? Or something is it doable also or not? Yeah, because it's just a command line argument. So what you do is you you run oh. apt get, right? So you do the install, then you have to do system control minus minus edit Jenkins or system control edit Jenkins. I forget if there are two minuses, but system control edit Jenkins, and then you adjust the command line arguments of that Jenkins service so that you can pass this additional command line argument that says, I want to enable future Java. Oh, that's cool. Thanks a lot for your insights. Um, because as you already know, I managed to have a Jenkins agent on Risk Five, and this time I'm trying to install on a server, the Jenkins controller. Uh, so that may help me with that. Oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm afraid we are out of time. Thanks a lot for uh, this um, picture, this graph. It's really exciting to see where we're going to. Um, the video should be available from 24 to 48 eight hours, difficult to say. And so two weeks from now, no meeting. So see you at the end of August. Uh, until then, enjoy Jenkins. <laughs> and your time off, if ever you have some. See you later. Thanks a lot for your time. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.